Good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, third special meeting of the week. Uh, tonight is the decision night for our new superintendent who will lead us in the district, uh, hopefully for the next decade type of period based on the two candidates we've had. Uh, to begin tonight's meeting, I'd ask everyone to stand and join me in citing the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you, and that's very meaningful going into this weekend's Memorial Day. That said, we'll uh, begin the meeting. Uh, the first order of business is to call the roll. Sorry, Mr. Secretary. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky. I'm here. Treasurer Brand Stanton. I'm here. Member Gordon. Here. Member McFarland. Here. Member Vanderpoint. So we have six of the seven. I assume Kim will show up here shortly. Um, any requests in the audience to address the board? We have no free requests. Seeing none, we'll move into Board of Education matters, and the matter tonight at hand is selection of our superintendent. Uh, we've had him here for uh, two interviews each. We've uh, each called references in the district. Each of us had different people to call. Uh, tonight, to come to the decision point, uh, what I'll be asking is board members to cite what they liked about each candidate. Uh, we'll hear from that if we seem to have a consensus or not on who the candidate is. And we'll just keep uh, grinding the sausage until we know who we think is, group is the best leader of our district. Uh, at that point, we will call for a motion uh, to uh, endorse that uh, person and to send uh, a team of site evaluators to the site. Okay, so that said, uh, we'll begin the discussion of the candidates. And I guess I would call on, I'm going to do it random tonight versus uh, linear. And so I'll call on Angela first. Well, okay. Um, thoroughly enjoyed both interviews that we had. Um, both candidates, very outstanding. Um, I'll start with Wayne first because he was here first. And um, he is just, he's very personable. He was very easy to talk to. He, um, you know, has told us a lot of things that have gone on in his district in Wisconsin. Um, very strong with finances, which I thought was very important. I, um, I'll go to the person I called. I actually called um, Scott DeYoung, who is actually the business manager um, in his current school district, and I talked to him. Um, you know, I had questions. He, he, once again, pointed out very strong financially. He really appreciated that, because when he put stuff together, he, you know, had the confidence that when Wayne was going somewhere to present the information, that he had a total, full understanding of what that was. Um, I talked a little bit about, because Wayne really brings up that he, you know, is kind of the conductor of the orchestra, and he's, you know, puts the right people in the right places. And so I asked him about that. Do you feel like he has done a good job in the people that he's hired for the different positions? And he said, yes, um, definitely he felt that way, um, that he did do a good job with that. So um, I guess that is a lot of my impressions in Wayne. Um, Mike was here last night. Also, I thought a very good interview, very much enjoyed. Um, his presentation, he definitely went through a lot of specific things that he's accomplished. One of the things that really stood out to me about him was um, just his creativity and um, through talking to him um, even at dinner last night, just the way he thinks and the way he puts together pieces. He was explaining one program that he has in his district and he took us through his thought process of how he got there and it was just it was very fascinating to hear, you know, I heard of this one thing and I thought, hmm, how can I, you know, transfer that to something? Um, he also, I thought he, he knows Michigan very well, which I think right now and um, with everything that's going on is important. There would be no um, need to come up to speed on some of the political things here right now. Um, the person I called from his district was Lee Bristol, and Lee was a 20-year school board member, past president, also had been treasurer. I think he had done it all on the school board. He was very, very positive um, about Mike. I asked him when Mike came, um, well, I guess he was already in the district, he was principal, and then he'd become superintendent, if a lot of the programs 
if he actually came in and changed a lot of things, if he brought a lot of new ideas, or did he just kind of stay with a lot of the status quo? And he said no. He definitely looked at um, some of the programs they had, did some tweaks on some things that were already there, maybe good but not great, did some tweaks, and then he, yes, very you know, innovatively brought in a lot of um, new ideas. And he, he was very positive. He was very proud of their district when I talked to him, you know, brought up their test scores and how well they compare. Um, you know, he compared with the Tri-County area, which would have been St. Clair County, Macomb County, and Oakland County. So um, definitely very um, personal about that and, um, yeah, very, very positive about Mike. So I think with that, if everyone will get a chance. <coughs> Welcome, Kim. I'll, I'll save you for a little Thank bit. You. I'll let you catch your breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just to show you where we're at, you'll probably learn as everybody's doing it, uh, to please comment on each of the candidates and what you saw their strengths were. And uh, then we'll kind of hear each other and, and see if we have a consensus or not a consensus. We'll keep grinding the sausage. Uh, Lynn. <clears throat> All righty. I, um, I did not make any phone call so I can't compare to that. I, that was when I was out of town and um, I will start with Dr. Wayne Anderson and of course I only saw him the other the other night for the first time but um, he had many wonderful qualities and um, a great communicator with the community, the staff, and his administration and he prided himself on being very accessible and willing to work with uh, with everyone and he has very strong budget experience and has w worked with finance and has been very creative along those those lines let's see he has um, got experience with uh, some creative uh, curriculum he talked about his global academy the global academy that's in the area that with their, within their district they uh, don't ha don't have an ib at their particular school but they work with many of the businesses and uh, the other uh, schools in the area, and especially being outside of Madison, Wisconsin, he talked about how they really interact well with the community and the and the local organizations to provide opportunities for the students, which uh, they might not be able to uh, afford otherwise. And then uh, with Michael, I thought he too was um, very. Uh, Prided himself on being a good communicator, same same kind of thing with the community and amongst his staff, and, and very accessible. Um, he, but uh, he he went into a little more depth on his innovative programs that he was very proud of and excited of about his reward program, the the pass program, which is the, at the high school that is a mentoring between uh, upperclassmen and freshmen for at-risk uh, freshmen. He talked about it, uh, blended learning and flipped classes and tied that into technology and, and looking at the future. They, they have the IB program and then of course the Blue Water Learning Academy which is their alternative school for at-risk students. So I, his, um, his experience in some of those programs which are some of the similar programs that we have and what we're looking forward to with our technology and uh, in uh, increasing our IB programs, hopefully. I, I thought that was very nice. Um, he's very involved in the Michigan, um, with Michigan education and l leadership in his or the local and uh, state organizations, uh, even in the Midwest. So I think he, that's real, Im real important with everything that uh, Michigan is, is going through right now. It seems like it changes daily. And he also, uh, I was very impressed when he talked about how important it is in mentoring within their own education community, um, future leaders, you know, t teachers, young administrators, to help groom them to uh, be the best they can be. And hopefully, they will have a good succession in, in the <coughs> district. And, and I think we need that. We're seeing that, uh, you know, finding in people that want to go into administration and have the proper experience is a little more difficult. And um, I thought that was a very, a very nice plus for Michael. Let's see. Yvonne. Okay, we're going to, we're starting to get to the point already where we're going to repeat things that <laughs> others have said, but that's okay. Doesn't take long. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, I'll do like the others did and start with Dr. Anderson. Um, I like the fact that he has a long 
experience history, long history in the public schools. He's got great experience. He's uh, been through and done a lot. He um, also stresses the importance of great employee relations. That's very important to him. I think that's great. I, it's important to me, too. He's got a strong financial background. I think that's great. He does the teaching at um, Madison. That's great. Um, I like, too, the way he, his district collaborates with all the schools in the local area so that they can really offer the students a lot um, that they couldn't do just on their own. He talked about uh, technology, wanting to do more that way, just like we do. I thought that would be a real nice fit. Um, he seemed, like Angela said, like a very personable guy, the, you know, very likable person. So those are all good things. <coughs> um, about Mr. Charles, he just amazed me as an innovator. I cannot believe all the different programs they have at Algonac in a small, not particularly affluent district. I was overwhelmed by all the things they do, really innovative things. And Lynn mentioned the mentoring. What a great idea. Um, he, too, was stressed how he has excellent working relationships with teachers. He talked about inviting the MEA folks into different meetings to get their perspective on things. And I don't remember now specifically what he, that was. But he did talk about that in his first interview. And I thought that was great. I think it's amazing that they have such a high achieving district, as small as it is, how they can compare themselves to other schools, much larger schools in Macomb County, and they, co they compare very well. I think that's amazing. Um, he talked about you know, how everyone has had to make concessions, but he's worked very hard to keep those away from um, the, keep them away from the kids. I think that's how he put it. And also he said he's tried very hard to keep concessions away from the teacher's paycheck. I thought that was very nice. I like that idea. Um, one of the things, though, that really stood out to me about Mr. Sharrow, I, I noticed this about him when he was giving his presentation last night. He is a person who is very optimistic about the future of public education. I just really got that from him. He's very optimistic, and he's still very excited about it. I think that's great. I think there's a lot of bad news for public education, and it's easy to get kind of start to feel kind of dismal about it sometimes and you know with the lack of resources and all the cuts but I just really caught his excitement last night I thought so I think that's a great thing and I would like to just mention a couple quotes from him too he said the number one indicator of academic achievement is still wealth and we need to fix that I agree with that I like that and then he also said we still need professional teachers and they need to be paid I like both those ideas a lot so <laughs> that's it let's see uh, Scott. Okay. <clears throat> um, I, yeah, I've got my list here for, for both candidates, and as <coughs> you all are talking, I'm checking things off that <laughs> are being said. So um, it's going to, again, sound redundant. Uh, starting with Dr. Anderson, I, I really liked him. He was just a nice guy to talk to, very pleasant. Um, I, I was able to join everybody for dinner uh, with Dr. Anderson, and, and I was not able to do so last night. Um, Real easy to talk to, or very easy going. I liked uh, the guy's got a ton of experience, just a, a lot of a big wealth of knowledge. Um, he's very personable. He's great, and I think that translates into his relationships that he's developed over the course of his career. Uh, I liked what he said about um, his interaction with the community, in that he does home visits, uh, in that he has community meetings. Um, I like that he teaches budgeting and, and has a lot of financial um, know-how to solve problems. Um, he's got great credentials. I thought he presented well when he was here for both of his interviews. And uh, he had a good knowledge of our community for being at arm's length. He did his research. He came here and knew what he was talking about when he was discussing Midland and MPS. Um, moving to Mike. Um, <coughs> I thought he was equally personable, and, and I say that knowing that I was pretty down on, on him, um, pretty hard on him for his initial interview, uh, saying he had zero energy, and, and I didn't think he was a great candidate. Um, so he, he is a good candidate. Um, he had a really thorough presentation. Um, it was long, but it was thorough. Uh, he, he, getting to his innovation, I mean, the guy's just got great ideas. He's done a lot of stuff. And, and uh, the reward program I thought was really interesting that, that hasn't been discussed. His implementation of IB, um, the Blue Water Academy, <coughs> I thought was, was really remarkable, something that stood out. Um, 
being financially creative, the, uh, the use of the cell tower, selling uh, or, or utilizing some of the school property that's not being used to generate revenue, um, creating uh, the academy that pays rent to his district. Uh, just really cool, out of the box uh, type mindset. Um, it, 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 I think it's a really good skill set that would fit well with where we are in MPS. Um, and, and he also did his research on the community, and I think that's important. I, I, I would be uh, disappointed if somebody came in here and couldn't tell you basic things about Membrand or, or the, the school system. Um, and he's got a good vision uh, for the future. He's very optimistic. I agree with you 100%. And, and he was, uh, he made no bones about, you know, where he thinks education is going and, and how, how he feels about it. So straightforward. I like that. Um, and, and I'll leave it at that. Any, any reference checks? I forgot to mention that. Okay. <laughs> Lonnie, you want to make some reference checks? <coughs> yeah. I called the editor of the uh, Mount Horeb newspaper and talked to him about Dr. Anderson. And he really stressed. Uh, his great communication skills. He's a very uh, good communicator, very easy to talk to, very open with him, and, and really keeps uh, good, clear lines of <coughs> communication. Um, he praised him highly. He thinks he's a great guy, and very easy to work with, a nice person to work with. Um, and then I talked to, oh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he's the uh, superintendent in Illinois. Um, oh, here we go. Um, Dennis Geyser. Dr. Yes, Dennis Geyser. <coughs> and I believe he's a former superintendent yes. of Algonac. Yes. yes, okay. He had just extremely high praise for Mr. Sharrell. He First of all, he described him as being a person of highest uh, integrity. He said you cannot find anyone anywhere with higher integrity than Mike Sharrell. Um, he said he had worked very closely with him for a number of years. He also talked about um, how innovative Mr. Sharrell is and just all the amazing things he comes up with. And, and he t you know, talked about all his accomplishments there, too, just like we've listed them. And basically, uh, he said that he would highly recommend him. He couldn't say enough good <coughs> things about him. And Scott, <coughs> any non-references? Um, I was not able to uh, actually talk with either of the references, um, due in part because of me, and, and I was not able to follow up with them today. Uh, I did reach out to them and was not able to touch base with them uh, prior to uh, yesterday, although I would expect both gave glowing reviews um, by way of written reference letters. And I would expect that, uh, you know, what they would tell me in relation to my questioning would fall directly in line with, with the letters that they, they authored. John. Okay. Um, I had one reference to uh, check for Dr. Anderson. And I talked with the uh, teacher un union president for Mountain Horror Public Schools. Uh, his name is John Mutchler. Um, I asked about some brief topics, uh, asked about budget, and uh, he felt that Dr. Anderson uh, kept up on top of the budget, gets the word out, stays on top of the changes, which are almost weekly or daily at this point um, in, in any state or any, any place in the United States. Um, he, uh, uh, Dr. Anderson had helped mentor um, Mr. Mutchler, along with his career, helped out with career choices, and he was very appreciative of that. Had known him uh, for 15 years, um, and he had uh, he had mentioned how how he helps maintain a cohesive district, which was um, a good attribute. And uh, he is a relationship builder. Um, and uh, as far as the technology, I think they're limited on their budget as far as what they could do with technology. But uh, for what they were able to do, they've been started on the. Um, on the one-to-one uh, -one computing route, and uh, they are proceeding in that direction. Um, he, uh, he and, and he said, uh, in in the heat of the battle, uh, he's fairly calm and steady, and he's able to work through some of the challenges, which I thought was uh, a really good, um, especially coming from Mr. Mutchler being our, our teacher union president uh, for that district. Um, and and I asked him at the end, would he absolutely want to have him continue as superintendent? He said yes. Um, I did not check a reference for Mr. Charles. Um, looking at uh, strengths. Um, and to be clear, John, you oh were yeah. not given one because the numbers weren't total there. So right. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand. <laughs> I just want yeah. the audience to understand it wasn't you did not make a phone yes. call. Oh, you yeah. were not given one. Right, right, right. Exactly. So, yeah. And I think the homework was split up last time differently with these the yeah. search firms, too. Yeah. So it kind of evened itself out. Um, as far as uh, with Dr. Anderson, um, I think he has some experience with some referendums, uh, building projects, which is a strong point. Um, he's a good communicator, uh, effective presenter. 
Um, he does have some expertise at the university level on budgeting, which was really neat um, to have that uh, expertise. Um, and uh, and, and I, I think that um, the, the one thing that um, was really neat is that he just had a broad range of experiences you know, that he could bring to, to the district. Um, as far as Mr. Sharrow, um, I, was, uh, I, I was actually um, really, really impressed. I look at the needs for Midland Public School going forward, and what he said about the mentoring process is that he had to turn over all, the, all the, um, his administrators, and I think that's going to be a big need coming up from Midland Public Schools. And uh, we talked at length at dinner about what his district looks like as far as at-risk kids. And he has one Title uh, Title I elementary building with the achievement scores, with that, that title uh, level being over 50% in that building where the achievement scores uh, is comparable to the non-title elementary building. And I thought that that was really great to have those programs and those supports in place for those teachers and for those kids, um, which is really a challenge that we're going to see increasingly here in this district. Um, and very passionate, very connected with the um, with the um, the early on programs and also the preschool programs, and how they try to shake hands and try to have continuity to what's going on in, in early childhood to bring in and incorporating that, and so they hit the ground running in kindergarten. And I think that's definitely is a charge of uh, Governor Snyder, um, but also makes sense with all the data and the support and so forth. Um, I actually looked at the writing samples, for example, and I thought that uh, that Mr. Sharrow had a very well-developed, uh, very succinct, nice style to his communication ability in, in writing. I know everybody's a little bit different in interviewing and presenting and so forth, but I thought he, he, he really did very well with his writing, which is a lot of what we get from superintendents um, as things come up and so forth, emails and so forth. Um, and I was really impressed with uh, his innovation as far as budgeting, and to be able to do that um, on sometimes a shoestring budget, and to have those innovative programs, and to have those things work in that district, I was really impressed to have wins the hearts and the minds of the stakeholders and to make that work. And I was really impressed that somebody could get that done in Michigan in this economy and this uh, funding uh, climate. Excellent. Let's see. I'll, I'll, we're, we've been going random. Can you, I'll go next. And okay, you thank you. Um, <coughs> starting with Dr. Wayne Anderson, uh, first of all, I was going to say Dr. Wayne, Dr. Wayne Anderson has his PhD. That's a nice little plus. Um, he's obviously, everybody else is a very personable, pleasant, energetic, um, and experienced. Um, he has strong financial expertise, not just in, uh, by comments I got from my reference check, I'll go to those in a minute, but also by what we see in his professional associations and his teaching, et cetera, et cetera. He's shown he's willing to rely on others for educational programs and innovation, and he has strong presentation skills and, and strong interpersonal skills. He's just very bubbly and bright as everybody else mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, he has done lots of good coordination with other districts, and he's managed growth in his district in, in, in a district that had troubles to start with and ended up with troubles not at the end. Uh, I spoke with their board president. Um, board president, uh, they, they do like Wayne very much. Um, financial attributes are his strength. Um, he's been good at uh, delegating to others the more educational aspects. And so they, they hate to see him leave. Uh, but they are, are, are pleased that he's had a great career there and uh, wish him well whatever he does in the next stage of his career. Uh, Mike Sharrow, uh, everybody else has commented on the thing that impresses me the most about Mike is the long list of accomplishments. And uh, forget the long presentation even, you know, <laughs> you, you just sit there and go one after the other of things he's brought to that district. And I'll talk about the reference check here in a minute validating all of that. Um, He's really driven his district. Think about that, Algonac. It, to me, it's not what you're in, it's what you've made it. And he has made that the, a premier district in that region. And we're even talking even into northern Macomb County a bit. Um, and that's very, very impressive considering what it is to what he's built it to be. Uh, very innovative, we all saw that. Uh, intimate knowledge of trends and new mm -hmm. things in education. And, <coughs> and you know, he commented, uh, that he's willing to take calculated risk, that's great. But in conversations and reference checks, it's not only he comments he likes to do that, he has done that. You know, the proof's in the pudding. He's got many things he's instituted that work, many things that didn't work, things he tweaked to make them work, uh, one after the other. So he's not afraid to try things, he's not afraid to recycle when it doesn't work, and he's eager to put resources into it when it does. 
Uh, he's done great things with his at-risk students. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. John, you pointed it out. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the numbers speak for, for the accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, he's done great things for his gifted and talented, bringing in the IB on his initiative, finding funding for it, figuring out ways to bring that forward. And I loved his philosophy where he thinks IB just doesn't enhance and stretch the good students and the strong students. It is a mechanism to bring all students along. I like that thought process. Um, he's compelled, I think I repeat myself, he compelled a district to heights with their at-risk profile that, that you wouldn't normally expect to see. And that tells me he's made the most with what he's had. And that, that, that's big to me. Um, not only did he talk about mentoring, but what I liked about his mentoring is if you dug in and asked enough questions, you learned that he put systems in place. He's developed a system for his direct people. He's had his, his people doing mentoring of their people and demanding that of them and reviewing it annually. I liked that, it, that he talked about it's, it's institutionalized versus just on his whim. And that's important in a district midland size to be able to institutionalize some of those kind of tools. He has great legislative contacts mm -hmm. and knowledge. I mean, he, he really did. I was very, very impressed with that. His board president um, was very clear that Mike not only walks the walk, but talks the talk. He made it very clear that those lists of accomplishments were really driven by him. He, uh, he said, and I think somebody else mentioned it on one of their reference chats, uber high integrity. He said no one in town doubts his integrity. Um, he gets it done. And the most interesting part is um, he said he, the district's not without conflict. It, the way, you know, shrinking things, there is conflict. He had privatization this week. Uh, he's had other issues he's had to deal with. He said, but he's handled that conflict <coughs> well on a personal standpoint and, and a demeanor standpoint. And getting people in town, while they may disagree with him, feel they've been honest with him and upfront with him. And that's very important to me as we go forward. The last thing I'll say about the uh, board president, um, I found it very interesting. Uh, his occupation is uh, met, uh, a real live locomotive engineer. He toots the horn and drives the train. <laughs> and he's the, he's the board president. And we're t he's going through all this stuff. And he's getting towards the end. And he said, you know, he said, yeah, if, if you get Michael, I'm going to be really upset with you. Uh, but I'm going to be really happy for him. Because if this is what he wants, that's what I want for him. And he paused for a minute and he said, you know, but it's really going to make me, and he hesitated, and I heard his voice crack, and he finally said the word sad, and he said, I guess I didn't have to tell you that after you heard my voice. <laughs> so, you know, I had this image of a train engineer getting emotional about losing his uh, superintendent, which tells me how invested they are in him, and that they made me feel very uh, confident that Michael can do great things for us. Yeah. Uh, I have a reference letter from Dan DeGro. He was superintendent of St. Clair Risa Education Services Agency. And he says, Kim, I'd be happy to answer the questions you have raised. I know Midland has an excellent school system. The choice you are making is a very important one. I do think that Mike will not only work with your community business leaders, but thrive in that environment. He has been able to accomplish a lot without that type of support. But to the extent that exists in our county, Mike has taken advantage of it. Our county community foundation has worked and supported Algonac schools. I am sure Mike can implement cutting edge programs and ideas quickly. Algonac has started an IB program recently and is exploring year round school through a community discussion that Mike is leading. They also have been a county leader in implementing technology throughout the district and online classes in high school, where I believe every student has two before uh, they leave the school system, which is nice. And he said, I'm extremely confident that Mike can keep your spending in line with your revenue and gain the confidence from the community necessary to pass the millage in the near future. Algonac is financially solid despite the tough times and has passed millages under his leadership despite being a poor community. Mike takes great pride in the academic accomplishments of Algonac, despite along with Port Huron being the poorest school district in the county, they consistently rank much higher in results. He understands that all children can learn, and the district's job is to find ways to make it happen. With the resources Midland has, I believe being the best in the state is a reasonable goal, and Mike can make that happen. Algonac was the first district to partner with RESA. They have us do their payroll and HR department. They have saved Algonac many dollars that they were able to use towards directly educating young people. 
RESA is also heavily involved with all districts, including Algonac and technology, using our county network to partner on many initiatives. I won't list all the partnerships, but Algonac has been a team player and is always looking to find ways to improve. In closing, let me say that the 2013 school district, even Midland, cannot just rely on things that have worked in the past to continue to succeed. Mike has the drive and the skill set to see that all resources in the entire community are harnessed to work as a team to take Midland schools where you rightfully think they need to be. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. He was very helpful, <coughs> glowing review of um, Mike Sharo as all the others were also, and I really enjoyed dinner last night and meeting with Pam, who is a early childhood expert, and her passion for that area uh, just really made me think that they're a wonderful couple and will really uh, help improve middle public schools. Let's see, I had another list of a couple other things I wanted to say about Mr. Sharrow. I had a big long list of good things about him <laughs> and all his innovation. I really like that. I think Risa has been a major support to him. And I'm just wondering how we can develop something similar at Midland Public Schools to support him in his innovation. And then for Dr. Anderson, I had a um, reference from Philip Leavenworth, a parent in the district. And I asked, Dr. Anderson seems like someone who cares about people. This is what we need, someone honest and dependable who facilitate programs and attract students back to our district with cutting edge programs. He replied, honesty and dependability ran very high in Dr. Anderson's set of personal attributes. And uh, program qualifications, Dr. Anderson, as I said, has a strong ability to attract fine educators. I think in part because he is a good people person and people do feel warmth and trust in him. As I reflect on recent years and the budgetary difficulties that public school systems have faced. It's amazing that Dr. Anderson has been able to find solutions where none were apparent. Mount Horeb has been recognized for its dynamic and diverse programs, and this is due in no small part to the people that Dr. Anderson has recruited and maintained into his re receptivity to and overall vision for a stimulating educational environment. And my next question was, do you think Dr. An Anderson will be able to <coughs> facilitate the uh, implementation of world-class, best-of-best programs in a timely manner. I believe that timeliness is the key word in your question. Dr. Anderson will motivate the staff of your district to create great programs, and you will see multiple streams of implementation. But where resources are both involved and scarce, you will see a very disciplined attention to priorities from Dr. Anderson. And the best part of this is he will have thoroughly thought these priorities through, and he will be able to communicate with reason and precision why he set priorities. And this prioritization will be done with your current and forward knowledge and participati participation. Dr. Anderson is a master when it comes to managerial excellence. Management was my graduate degree concentration, so that's where he's saying he has knowledge about that. Do you think he will be able to make sure our budget is sustainable so that we can ask with integrity for a technology bond and millage from our community. In my previous reply to you, I recall that I emphasized that Dr. Anderson was an astute manager of the budget. He understands budgets in detail and he can communicate them plainly and succinctly, no gobbledygook. <laughs> I must say that as I reflect on an answer to your question that no one could deal successfully with a budget unless he or she understood it in detail in a manner that no one, that one could communicate it well. Dr. Anderson knows tight budgets, even really tight budgets. Those are the reality of public school education these days. We all need to understand that Dr. Anderson is really good at explaining the budget and relevant constraints, and, and then he does the best thing that anyone can do. He asks for input, and he honors that. No one will ever say that he or she lacked communication or opportunity to communicate. With all of this opportunity and sharing, however, I'd like to reiterate that Dr. Anderson will make the necessary and sometimes courageous decisions that will be the best for your district. Who, how to say this is equini equanimity. In spite of this, his kind and often gentle nature, Dr. Anderson is no shrinking wallflower. As my dad used to say, you'll get the best person for the job. 
My next question, he appears to have had good luck in the past with bonds and millages passing in Mount Horeb. Is that your experience? Yes, as I recall over the past 18 years, every referendum has passed. There was one land parcel that was ancillary part of one referendum, one that the school district hoped to bank because it was then available at a pretty good price. But the voters chose to forgo it so that they could feel comfortable with a very much larger component to the referendum that was an imperative for our operations and growth. Your question really addresses the great strengths Dr. Anderson shows every day. He is an incredibly hard worker and he leads by example. He communicates thoroughly, openly, yet plainly. He is completely forthright without an appearance of a hidden agenda or guile. He is dedicated and persuasive, not from a forceful nature, but rather from a rational appeal. Dr. Anderson is not in any way a man given to personal extravagance or embellishment. This is a terrific asset in a public figure and leader who asks people for help. He understands the needs because he has assessed them and the program implementations. In short, people trust him. I have found that inter interpersonal trust and consequently real respect must be the single most important attribute that Dr. Anderson carries every day. And then my last question, sorry, I know this is really long. <laughs> Do you think he will be able to make us the best district in, the, in Michigan? A great district is really about great staff. I'd like to emphasize that Dr. Anderson's staff really care for and about him. They give their best effort every day. Motivating staff to work really well and really hard for you because they want to please you is a wonderful attribute to have. He has it. I really don't think that you can enlist the services of a better administrator. I have n no unknown to you advantage in saying that. Dr. Anderson is simply the best. You've really found a wonderful candidate and I cannot advise you more strongly or more sincerely to employ this man. Whatever is humanly possible to do to make your district the best that it can be, you will get from Dr. Anderson. As you can infer from my statements, I am sad to see Dr. Anderson leave. He has been a great leader in our community. He will be a great asset to Midland as well. Please feel free to call me if you wish. So during the middle of May, I will be up <laughs> tilling my fields. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the rest about Mr. Mr. Sharrow, so I'll get to that. Here's what I was thinking about Dr. Anderson. Um, I think Mount Horeb student achievement reports are similar to Midland Public Schools achievement numbers. Dr. Anderson has a broader amount of experience in varying educational settings. He is an empathetic, caring leader who I believe will attract students that are currently choosing to leave Midland Public Schools. I also think MPS will return to being the district of choice for many more students. I need a drink. <laughs> Dr. Anderson's wife, Susan, was a special needs teacher, and I'm sure she will be an advocate in that area. His daughter is currently a special needs teacher, so I'm sure this will be an area of emphasis by Dr. Anderson. He came into the district and held a contentious healed a contentious relationship between administration and teachers, and during his 17 years has maintained that relationship. Wisconsin is two years ahead in spending cuts, and it hasn't negatively impacted Mount Horeb. Dr. Anderson has his degree from University of Wisconsin, which is one of the premier schools for educational administration in the nation. The University of Wisconsin also chose Dr. Anderson to teach school finance to the future leaders of the industry. His depth of life experience to bridge all stakeholders in the community is something that's very important to me. Mount Horeb is a bedroom community of Mas Madison, Wisconsin, with many competing bedroom communities and Mount Horeb has continued in growth mode, which I think is very important. Dr. Anderson agreed to achieve the ASBO Meritorious Budget Award, which will align our budget with our class sizes, and he has received the Wisconsin Budget Award for the last 11 years. I think Dr. Anderson's polished professionalism will help him embrace stack stakeholders in the community, and Dr. Anderson's 17 years of experience as superintendent in Mount Horeb also gives him excellent human resource skills Within the next th next year, there will be three opportunities to hire for positions where administration is retiring. This will have a major impact on the culture of MPS. These choices will determine how quickly and confidently we move into the 21st century. I really like that he was familiar with Obamacare and how it will impact the budget, and he's already handling that for Mount Horeb. And all of Dr. Anderson's reference letters are stellar. He is trustworthy, and that is what we will need to heal relationships 
within the district and within the community. He will be able to ensure our budget is sustainable and create an all-encompassing strategic plan with all stakeholders in the community, which will allow us to pass a technology bond in a millage. And here were some things I wanted to say about Mr. Sharrow. Oh, it was about his wife first. First, I have to start with Mike Sharrow's wife, Pam Sharrow. She has a real passion for early childhood education, and she is a specialist in this area. I value the importance of early childhood education and know that Mr. Sharrow will emphasize this area as he knows the impact of being kindergarten work ready. Mr. Sharrow is ready. Oh, is already. <laughs> Mr. Sharrow is already uh, having many cutting edge initiatives, including flipped classrooms, one-on-one -on -one mastery learning at the middle school through one-to-one -one computing. He has passed a technology bond in Millage in a very poor community to allow one-to-one -one computing. Mr. Sharrow has seen the benefits of outsourcing payroll, HR, and having the backbone of the Wi-Fi through RISA. Mr. Sharrow has a passion for education and seeks ways to implement initiatives that the government would like to see schools implement. Oh, on my input. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I think it's got everybody there. What did you say again? <laughs> <laughs> Can you read it? <laughs> no, you that? Um, obviously, we have two very good candidates. You know, we all feel good about each of them. Uh, I think we each feel stronger about one than another a little bit. Um, I guess at this point, what I'd like to hear from each of you, of which one do you feel is the best fit for our district? Um, um, and I will go left to right this time, if that's all right. Yeah. Scott? Uh, you know, cutting right to the chase, or um, very simply, uh, Mike Sharp. Mike Sharp. Uh, I, I think I, for a lot of the reasons that everybody's uh, stated, and I'm not going to regurgitate everything, um, I just think he's got the skill set we're looking for at this point in time. Okay. Angela? I'm, I'm going to have to go with Mike. Just I love his creativity and the fact that I think he has experienced a lot of the same issues that we're experiencing as a district, and he has shown us some ways he's been creative to overcome some of those issues. So I think for what we need right now, that he seems like he would be the best fit. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of soak time on the phone with a lot of our stakeholders and uh, really – really kept making any sort of decision until we had our second interviews. I, I learned a lot through the process and uh, did not have my mind made up until we had our, our final interviews, and it really did make a difference. Um, and I heard from uh, stakeholders, whether it was teachers, administrators, uh, parents, um, assistants, and so forth, and even some of the business community. I said, what do you think? What are you hearing? And not everybody's followed this all that closely, but uh, – there's, there's strong um, advocates for both. And um, I, when I asked a dozen or so or more people, I said, would, would you not be able to support either one of these if they're selected? And nobody said that they would not be able to support that, that you guys have a tough decision. Um, I just look at, I look at, and, and I went right to the document that our search firm, SEC, prepared. And I looked at the categories or educational leadership and background community leadership, leadership skills, and interpersonal characteristics. And I thought, wow, there's just a lot. Of, if I made a column for one name or the other, there is really, really, uh, these leaders really shine. And, and they have, they've really done a lot for education in their districts. I just thought that the better fit, especially on the at-risk kids' needs, I think with the uh, early childhood interventions, looking at our budget uh, challenges and how we need to do things differently and to do it well and continue the excellence, I think, uh, Mr. Sharrow definitely is a, a better fit for that. And it was not, it's not an easy determination to make. It's just looking at our needs, what are, uh, what has the, the very unique individuals, which one is a better fit, and I think Mr. Sharrow is. Okay. Um, I'll go, we'll just keep going. Um, I too reached out to a lot of stakeholders, and you're right, there's uh, those who have watched, there are some that uh, see attributes in the one that they really like, and attributes and the other they really like. And the nice thing is I haven't heard any comments about attributes they don't like in either of the candidates. So that's that's comforting. Um, John, I also saw the innovation that I think you mentioned, and especially for uh, the at-risk population mm -hmm. and the early education and the ability to uh, galvanize that in this district. 
uh, with the, all the current providers uh, and thoughts around that that we heard. I was, uh, I could see that innovation starting to churn already. Um, Mr. Anderson uh, is, is a great personality. Um, I think he, as Kim commented on her comments, I, I think he can go a long way to uh, not only take the district forward, but uh, uh, healing relationships that we, you know, we may need healing. But I did the same thing you did. I went to the list. What did the community tell us they wanted? And when I got done, and I call it by narrow margins, I would have said Mr. Sharl also, based on the list that we got uh, from the community telling us he just seemed the better fit for what we were looking for today. So I'd agree with you three so far for, for Mr. Sharl. I agree also. Mr. Sharl was my first choice right from the beginning, and he remains my first choice. Um, and I guess I just have to keep saying that I'm just amazed at the things that have happened in Algonac under his leadership. That just amazes me, and I feel like he can do those similar kinds of things here in Midland. I think he has just such a great outlook, um, just that excitement for what he can do and to keep pushing himself to be more creative. Um, I think Dr. Anderson is, a, as everybody said, a very personable person, has a great amount of experience. But I just got the feeling that Mr. Sharo is the person who can take Midland Public Schools where we really want to go. He can really help us get there, I think. Thank you. Lynn? Well, I, <coughs> excuse me, I agree. <coughs> Two great, great, wonderful candidates with very, very many um, attributes that, that are so positive. Um, but I would tend to go with a vote for Mr. Sharo for all the same reasons that you have said and um, just the what impressed me so much was his excitement his exuberance his enthusiasm he's uh, talking to him especially last night with all these programs and the in innovative programs he's already uh, helped implement and, and led but also he keeps he's talking about even future programs and and to quote him somewhat he said I am not embarrassed to say that I am I will steal other people's programs and tweak them. He said, if they're good, I'm willing to try them and fit them, fit them if, it, if it meets the needs in my, my school district. And so I think as we're, we're looking at our changing <coughs> population and our, our challenges with budgets and, and with all, a lot of the, the uh, examples that we've all shared of, of what Mr. Sharo has um, accomplished <coughs> and what he has done, I, I think he too is, is the best fit for for Midland at this point. It's a tough decision, <laughs> I have to say. I agree. Really like Dr. Anderson's student achievement uh, numbers, and that's the only reason I'm hesitant on Mr. Sharo. I love all his initiatives. They're just on the verge of being implemented, so he has thought them all through, but we haven't seen the impact on student achievement yet. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be there, so. <laughs> We'd like to make it unanimous. It's unanimous. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, thanks for the comments. And we'll move to a motion, but I will take uh, prerogative to make a comment. I, I appreciate what everybody's done in their thoughtfulness and in their introspection. Uh, they're, they're looking to the references, talking to people in town who, uh, stakeholders that may want it. So I, I thank you, Ian, for this is the toughest decision uh, and most important decision we have to make. And interestingly enough, we had two great candidates that made it a tough decision. And that's great to have been in that position. And I just appreciate the diligence everybody did. That said, um, I guess I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, indicate that Mr. Sharo is our first choice at this point, and that uh, we will go to a site visit. And uh, is next is the next step in the process. I will uh, I will make that motion uh, that we adopt uh, Mr. Sharo as our finalist, and we move forward with the site visit. I support. We have a motion by Member McFarland, support by Treasurer Brandstad. Any other comments after all the comments tonight? See. Are we just limited to comments on our candidates, or are we going to move to some closing remarks? Oh, no, we're going to do more. We're going to do more business. So stay tuned. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think we can do a, a voice vote here. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you very much again, everybody. Uh, uh, tough decision. Uh, uh, let me move to another piece of the process. And Scott, if, if it doesn't go where you wanted to go, we can go there. Oh, no, it can go anywhere you want. <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss. 
Um, the next order of business is to talk about the, the site visit. Um, been highly urged by, uh, by council that we limit that to three board members in terms of the board member number who attend. So we will have a discussion about which board members will go. Uh, but in addition, uh, in talking with our consultant, Mr. Peterson, uh, and, and I think it's the uh, wish of most of the board, so I'll suggest it, uh, that we take a building administrator, because a lot of our central administrators got to see Mr. Sharl up front, have a building administrator go, have a teacher go, have a uh, union representative or president go, the advise choice uh, who's available, because it's going to be very short notice. And then uh, if we can find a parent that would be interested in going from maybe one of our PTO organizations. And then if anybody from the business community would like to go, that would be eight visitors, uh, three of them board members. Uh, in the end, it's always our decision, but it would be great for the rest of the community to hear things from his community. Um, again, he is our finalist, and this is kind of a due diligence check by us to make sure we've made the right choice and everything we've heard is the right things. It would be a, to set the stage, it would be a long day um, in terms of a visit. Um, he will set up the visit to reflect the groups much like we did for our focus groups. We would say basically your segments of the community and here's some examples to draw from. We want representatives from that, each of those segments that we can talk to. It would, uh, he would set up the schedule, he would get them calendarized and uh, we would be paraded around the district or more likely them paraded to us from a logistic standpoint. Um, so uh, I'd envision two carloads of people going down in the morning and uh, two carloads coming back after a long day that night. That would, be, and I'd recommend we had reserved uh, uh, Wednesday to do that because we have a Tuesday night board meeting because of the holiday next week. So I'd recommend we go on a Wednesday night. And then um, I gotta throw a little curveball in our process and I'm sorry, I, I hope you'll beg my indulgence. Um, I hate to talk these personal things in public, but I have to. Uh, I have to take my mother to the Cleveland Clinic on Friday, and we tentatively scheduled Friday to be the day that we vet all that information back. And we picked the Friday because we didn't know if we'd be traveling halfway across the country to get to somebody or not. But now that we're not, uh, I would beg your indulgence, the last piece of business, if we can move the Friday meeting up to Thursday, where the group that came in would report in to us of what they saw and what they experienced so we can make a uh, final authorization to uh, approach him about negotiating a contract. So it's long-winded. Um, I don't that out as a proposal to begin dialogue on just kind of free-flowing. Uh, any thoughts on the site visit, the date, the constituents that go, et cetera, and if we get that con agreed to, then I agree. think we should move into which of the board members should go. Well, that so. Friday is just not going to work. You, it's got to be the Friday. Just kidding. Um, the, the day the day is fine. Uh, as far as the board members, my thoughts are um, perhaps three of the more seasoned board members should attend, um, and I'm comfortable with that. Uh, w with me not attending, and I would prefer to see three seasoned members. Uh, how about that the how about the other members of the community that I listed? Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's it's great. List? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Without that, without a doubt. I'll just go around the table. Angela? Yeah. Thursday's fine. Agree with everything else you said. Okay. So I'm, yeah, I'm good. I, I love the idea of taking other people than mm -hmm. just board members. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's important for other people to get some time yep. to do that. It, review for me what's happening schedule wise next week, Memorial okay. Day, Monday, Tuesday is our board meeting. We have meeting. a normally scheduled board meeting, regularly scheduled board yep. meeting for Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. This group would go to the district on Wednesday okay. and then come back for a Thursday night meeting mm -hmm. to report in the findings to the rest of the to the rest of the board. So instead of a Friday meeting, it's a Thursday, Thursday meeting. Correct. Yeah. That that's my proposal. On the t just want to think of it. Five that. or seven. Five. Uh, or seven. Ah, <laughs> throw a curveball. <laughs> 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 what was the schedule for? How about Friday? six? It was. I think it was for five, five on Friday. Okay. Because when to get done was because it was going to yeah. be a Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm. I, we can work out that. If you guys can accommodate my yeah. Thursday, I'll make what or my Thursday I'll make any time you want to be here Thursday yeah, <laughs> for I, me. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's doable. The, the 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 challenge that I have, of course, is that I have a number of people on a schedule yep. that I will affect many people um, to reschedule. But um, 
I, I know that there's also other work to be done as far as reference checks. There's additional reference checks. Yes. I would, I'd be very willing to work behind the scenes and do more of that work where I can go in between patients or lunch and things like that. Um, so it, it, that would be my preference, but if no, if it's not a good, um, if we don't have a, a proper delegation going down of the three board members, I'll, I'll, move, I'll move mountains if I have okay. to, yeah. yeah. Um, I was remiss, thank you yep. for reminding me. Yep. Your job's to poke me when I forget these things. <laughs> um, uh, one other thing we were doing is we will be supplied as per um, our, our consultant's uh, contract with 14 additional references, okay, each of which we could make two bold calls. And John and I were whispering before the meeting, well, gee, if people are going to go on the site visit, maybe we can relieve some of those people who are not going on the site visit, uh, uh, not relieve them, give them an amp more opportunity to talk to more people. So we can talk about that. If you're going on the site visit, do your don't you want to do the phone calls or have somebody make additional phone calls that might not have the, the opportunity. To I'll just point out, you guys will be in a car for two hours with cell phones. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> Actually, four hours. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll just go, what do you think about the whole package? And we'll talk about which board members go. I think it's go. great. I think it's a great idea. Okay. I'm in favor of all of that. And I agree with what Scott said. I think it's great to send more seasoned board members. By the same token, whatever you need me to do, I'm willing to do. So you just let me know. Lynn? I, I am actually, I'm free on Wednesday. If you do earlier on Thursday, it's much better. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I, and, and you're seasoned. Well, I don't, I don't know, know if I want that. Wednesday yeah. I guess season <laughs> sounds better <laughs> than <laughs> old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I am, Experience. I'm very pleased that, that uh, we're, we're going to take some other, other uh, community people with us and staff. So I think that's an excellent idea. Kim? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a good plan. I wish we would have engaged the community leaders a bit more earlier in the process, but I think we have a good candidate, so. Um. Who wants to raise their hand that says they do want to go on? Let's find out who really, really, really wants to go on the site visit, you know, and then we can winnow it down from there. This is the tough part of the process. So all who really want to go, raise your hands. Don't feel free. I mean, don't don't be bashful. If I need to take a day off, I can. That's how I feel too. I'm yeah, not. yeah. I'm. If you need me to, I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you talked about seasoned, not old board members, someone of your ilk. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting too good at this. Um, who would you recommend when you say season? I would say our three, three of the senior board members, uh, three of the officers. So that would be me, Lynn, John, or Angela, of those four. Right, and John, you know, has patience. So he, John has patience. He gracefully bowed out of that one. And um, Angela, you're willing. I mean, where are you at? I'm willing to take a day off work. I, I do not want to commit right now. I would need to check it out tomorrow and make sure that that was all right. Okay. Is, um, is that something that I can do or is that not? And let me throw out, okay. I, I will go if necessary. Okay, I'll it's tell you, Kim wanted to go. Well, I'll go, so, yes, if you need me, yeah. I'm available. So what we'll do is if you cannot, okay. if you come back to me and say you cannot, you're, you're in somebody's car. Okay, <laughs> okay. yeah, because um, there, there's so much how's that going sound? on right so it'll now. So be Lynn I and I for so. sure, and then Angela, or if Angela cannot, it will be Kim. Okay, then one last small mechanical thing. Sorry to grind all this sausage in public, guys. Um, the state required. Yes. Um, in terms of phone calls, for those of you not going, would you like extra phone calls? I can do that. Okay. I was hoping you would do that. Okay. Just sign them. It's great. You're great. the boss. Okay, so I will, I, when he gives me the list, whoever's not going will will do that. So there'll be, there'll be four people for 14, so you're going to get... Some are going to get three, some are going to get four, That's fine. and that'll be good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And then uh, I will work with Cindy to find these names behind these slots uh, tomorrow right away because it's such a short, short, mm -hmm. such short notice. If you have any recommendations on a parent or a business person uh, or a teacher, uh, feel free to deal me with those recommendations. And we'll try to patch that together real quick. But please make the recommendation relatively quick since it's a Tuesday trip. I've got to start talking it's to people. It's a Wednesday trip. Or Wednesday trip. I've got to start talking <laughs> to people tomorrow because it's the day, only two days after holiday weekend. And we're not going to have much time. Okay.
I think we're settled. Um, Mr. Consultant, do we have anything else to discuss tonight? Scott, did you get what you wanted covered? Yes, I just wanted to say in light of Memorial Day, uh, I think we should pay homage to our servicemen and women. I will not be here at our Tuesday meeting, so I won't have a chance to publicly do that in a time frame near Memorial Day. So uh, really a heartfelt thank you to all of our servicemen and women, past, present, and future, who have really paved the way for us to do this. And John, thank you. You're one of them. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments? I, I, I do. I do have. I do have one thing. I think I'm just. I'm just reflecting on how far the board has gone with this whole process. And uh, Dave, with our search firm, you've helped out a lot. Um, we're, Mr. Wasserman, you've done a great job. I. I'm just thinking how far we came from our first meeting on this, and uh, it, it, it's hard, but it's easy in helping us through. And I. I don't know how many phone calls and emails and everything you've returned, but thanks for what you've done. Oh, you've yes. really helped. We got a young board here, and it's like no sweat. I, how about this, Mr. Wasserman? Oh, no sweat, not a big deal. And I'm thinking, really? I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and 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 to uh, and to 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 never have looked at picking a CEO of an organization. That's new for me too. And I, and I've uh, reached out to a lot of people, some administrators, and so forth, and had some conversations with you. And it's um, it, it's gone really well. I, I was really nervous and intimidated with the process so I'm just glad that we're here at this point well, thank you yeah. it is a daunting it is a daunting responsibility mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that you bet. and uh, before I close I'd be very remiss um, to thank someone here in this room everybody on the board table look straight ahead or to your left <laughs> <laughs> and please say thank you Cindy you have been marvelous if you think of all the scheduling we've had to do with focus groups oh. candidates hotels meeting rooms dinners what yet's to come with this group. Uh, this woman has been nothing but professional and nothing but stellar. Giving up a 31st anniversary? Yes. Yeah, I was going to go there. And she's represented us very well, even to the point where yesterday was her 31st anniversary and she went to a very special dinner. Unfortunately, it was with us. <laughs> <laughs> Still so, so uh, Cindy, I'd like to uh, a tip of the hat and a thank you. With that, I will adjourn. Thank you very much. <laughs>